at Glenbrook School, numbers are going up everywhere. This is Glenbrook's year of maths, and they are determined to make numeracy part of every aspect of school, in and out of the classroom. Well, since we've had this maths drive, we've gone through the school, we've just looked at every area we could and done everything we could do to fill it up with anything to do with numbers to the extent that you don't even notice it sometimes it's there. I don't ever want a child to be anywhere in the school without something that's going to be interesting and, and providing a learning opportunity. Like most schools, Glenbrook Primary in South London has an army of teaching assistants doing formal numeracy support in class. But this year, as part of the big drive on maths, their TAs have been trained to provide a much wider level of numeracy support. We'd be finding lots of really exciting, fun ways of teaching the children, not the old ways that we learnt when we were at school. These are new ideas. Part of my role is try to incorporate ICT in the maths um, curriculum, from shapes to symmetry work to angles. Well, we can see the improvement has happened, the children enjoy maths now. We're just pulling together as a school to make numeracy work. In this programme, we are going to show you some of the ways TAs here help support numeracy through the lessons, activities, games and resources they've created. Hi Michelle. Sue mainly supports the Year 6 teacher, Michelle Spencer-Child. Um, the things I'm going to be doing with the group today. As soon as the teacher tells me exactly what they're going to teach for the maths lesson, I'm off. I'm down to the maths cupboard. I'm finding the coins, I'm finding the plastic triangles and, and I look through the books myself as well and I try and make sure that I fully understand what I'm doing and then think, well, how would I break it down if I didn't understand it? The first game I'm going to play to warm them up is something I learned in training, which is a question on one side, mm -hmm. how many pence in, whatever, and on the other side there's an answer. It doesn't match up to the question, right. um, and it's going to go round the group. Okay. Because of the range of needs within Year 6 and throughout the school, I've had to develop different ways of teaching them and make it as visual and as clear as possible. Sue has devised some games and activities for her small group to reinforce some important basic counting on skills. Two 50 pences in a pound. OK. So there's 100 pence in a pound, 50 pence in half a pound. We've got that, because okay, it's essential for the game. OK. Now, Tyrell, you can ask my first question. How many pence is £6.50? OK, so who has the answer to that? 650p. 650 pence. OK. How many pence in £2.50? 250 pence. How many pence in three pounds? 300 B. How many pence in four pounds fifty? I found recently with one of my groups that the children were struggling counting in tens. So we did a lot of work counting in tens, not just counting 10, 20, 30, but counting from 15 to 25, 35, etc. And then I thought, well, how can I make this more fun? We've been counting in tens for ages, boring. Um, let's make it money. Let's do it us um, going to the shop and counting change. What you're going to be doing in pairs is playing shopkeepers. Fun, huh? You have different amounts. That's how much you're going to be spending. And if I can find my two pound coins, that's how much you're going to be giving the shopkeeper. And the shopkeeper's going to be giving the coins to add on the change. In between. Shopkeepers don't subtract, they don't go one pound take away. So I thought counting on. And a counting on method was something I learned in training a few years ago. And I thought that would be really a good idea to combine my training with what I know they do in the shop. As soon as you've got your bits, you can start playing the game. You don't need that. What's your start point? How much have you spent? 45 pence. And how much are you going into the shop with a pound? OK, so how much change have you got from that then? 55 pence. 55 pence, that sounds about right. Perfect. 30. Yeah. too much. 33p. Send you to do my shopping in future. Right, now we're going to have to record some work. It's very rewarding when I see a group of children working on one of my sheets and uh, you know it's it's great especially when they understand it and they actually learn something from it which uh, and if they don't and I've marked it at the end and I thought oh well I haven't understood that well then I can come back the following day with something a lot more simple this um, really big fraction board I made a few years ago it's really good for showing equivalent fractions and which fraction is bigger three tenths is that bigger than two eighths they can really see this clock is my son's which is just fantastic it shows analog and digital time simultaneously which I think is really helpful because I don't always understand that this is brilliant this is 100 beers in tens so when you're counting and number bonding you can see it's 20 really really clearly 
Don't forget you can change the size of your brushes. You can have thin brushes, thick brushes. June does ICT support across the school and has made her computer skills an important part of the maths drive. Sit down and you all can see the game. She's doing some work on angles, distance and estimation with her Year 3 group, making creative use of the school's mini-robots. OK, do you remember what this is called? You take this off and you can see Roma. And he's called Roma because he roams here, he roams there, he roams everywhere. OK? But today he's going to be Gretel. Do you all know the story of Hansel and Gretel? Yeah. In this game, Gretel has made her way home. She's made her way home. And she's on the phone and she's texting Hansel to give him instructions how to get home. And we're going to help him to go down the right path. Okay. We have about seven Ro Romas in the school and we found that the children, after they used the Romas, they got a bit bored of just getting them to go from one part of the building to the other part. So to make it interesting, we decided to make up games to bring the Roma more alive. Right, I'm going to show you one space. Only a, is that a big space or a small space? Small space. Small space. Right, have a look at this line here. Who thinks they know how many spaces it would be to get the Roma to walk down to the path to this corner of the forest? Let's have an answer from you. Five. Five spaces. Do you want to come and have a try? Come on then. Right. And off he goes. Working with the Romas covers a great deal of maths from um, estimates to angles to spaces. So if I was to turn a quarter of a way, how far have I turned in angles? What's that big number? 90. 90. Well done. I tend to mark out the path and have a dry run before I get the kids involved because it depends on the surfaces. Sometimes if the floor's uneven, it doesn't go on the right track and all those things sort of put off the game. What do you think it might be if it's not free? Oh, I'm not going to ask you because you're making too much noise. Let's ask Esther. Working with the Romans is one of the most popular things that we have in ICT right through to year sixes. And the older children, they tend to use the computers more than the robots. And they're not too happy about that. <laughs> Here's Greta looking out for our brother. Well done. Excellent. Give yourself a crack. Well done. One, two... This year, no part of the school day has been left untouched by maths. Right, this time, children, we'll have to do it in twos, counting twos. We go, two, four, six, As part of us trying to eight, find as many areas ten, we could influence 12. the children with, with full-on, in-your-face maths, was to looking at times when they weren't actually sitting down for informal learning situations. Wow, Manny. How many have you not done? One, two, three. Well, the support staff spend one, more time with the children than we do in a lot of occasions because they do playground duties and dinner duties, and that's a really important time that we're trying to ensure that learning takes place even then. So what's six count on one? Uh, Elaine is a TA and mealtime supervisor who's been bitten by the maths bug. There's no playground game she can't adapt to include some number work. Yeah, four in a row going downwards, four in a row going across. Or four in a row going diagonally. <laughs> and wet play days don't mean the math stops. Elaine has created a host of games and activities for indoor play, like this board game for counting on and counting back. If you go, Matilda. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, five. oh no! Board games, you've got to make it simple enough for them to understand, but not, not too difficult. And I thought, well, they're always leaving their packed lunchbox, all the reading folders. I thought, well, why not make it fun but coming to school but losing things with it? Because it's real life, that's what happens in life. I took on board that situation, did a simple plan of the school, and a route to school, and then got the games going using little different cards. And it was reinforcing reading and counting on counting back. 
I would like you all just to take a few in your hands without looking and you've got to guess how many you think you've got in your hands. Off you go. I get my inspiration from the teachers I work with over the years and like the game for estimated game. I watch the teacher do another game before then. I thought, well, I could do it on a smaller scale for the, for the other children. We could have fun. Using the socks was fun because instead of using your hand, you use puppets. How many do you think you've got, Shewa? Six. Six. Joshua? Oh, I mean Seven. five. Seven. Three, Manny? Um, five. Right. Put your beads down and I want you to count them, see how many you've got. Three. I've got one. Three. Six. I was right. Six. You've got six. Well done. Maths displays are up on most of the school walls and a lot of them have been the work of Sophie. The children do enjoy looking at it. When I'm walking down the corridor sometimes I see them looking at the numbers and counting in their times tables. All the answers are there for them and little ages are enjoying it because it's so bright and colourful. Sophie's interest in art has inspired her to create some innovative ideas for helping these year three pupils with their ten times table. The numbers on this side shows you how many tens there are in your number. How many tens are there in 20? Two. How many tens are there in 30? The idea of moving the single number and moving it across next to the zero and then the children are able to see that it is the first number, the tens, that changes and it changes into the same number as what you're actually timesing it by. If I have 80 pence, how many 10 piece sweets could I buy? Put your <laughs> hands up. Uh, Twain. 80 pence. Yeah, eight. 80 pence. 80 pence. Eight. How many? Eight. At school, I didn't really enjoy maths as such because I wouldn't want a child to feel the way I did when I was um, learning maths at school. So I hope that I'm giving something to them for them to take away when they leave school. If I have 70 pence, and the sweets in the shop all cost 10p. How many sweets would I be able to buy? 7p. How many Seven. sweets would I be able to buy? Uh, um, seven, um. That's right, just seven. Remember the rules, we've got to see if we can go up instead of down. And I the whole school is involved in the maths challenge, a weekly competition to improve mental math skills. Three and what makes 20? Check it carefully, please. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Show me. Sue is a teaching assistant who works mostly in the maths room, and her role is to assess how the pupils are coping with the challenge. I was there taking note um, to see which children were actually getting it. The ones that weren't getting it so quickly, I'd make a note and look at the system that they were using. Um, some children use their fingers, some children will use um, the number square. The children that got it really quickly thought, well, you know, maybe they should be in a higher group at some point and see whether or not that would be better for them. Two and what equals 20? Show me! One of the big excitements in maths this year has been this maths challenge and that we can't do without the support of, of our creative TAs because they are instrumental in that. Mm, very impressed. Well done, guys. To bring something different to the children so they don't feel, oh, I, I don't want to do maths because it's boring or, or they're scared of numbers, there's a fun way of teaching maths. I can see now that the children do find it more fun. They do find it easier with the new methods. And I wish that I had learned these things when I was at school.